Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss propranolol. What is this drug propranolol? The suffix olol indicates that this drug is a beta blocker. And propranolol is having the propanol moiety. Generally catecholamines are having the ethanol moiety. But propranolol is a beta blocker which acts as antagonist on catecholamine receptors. That's why it is having the propanol chain instead of the ethanol chain. Generally, when there is an increased cardiac workload, it increases the number of impulses passing through the heart, which increase the oxygen consumption to the heart. With the increased oxygen consumption, there should be balanced supply of oxygen. But at very high cardiac workload, the oxygen consumption is excessively increased, resulting in the decreased oxygen supply. In such conditions, cardiac muscle cannot get the sufficient oxygen resulting in the development of angina, the pain developed in the heart due to the lack of oxygen supply. So this angina can be observed with excessive cardiac work. Similarly, when this cardiac work is excessively increased, it can increase the heart rate resulting in the tachycardia and palpitations. And sometimes the cardiac work is also associated with the development of anxiety. When our anxiety is going to be more developed, it can increase the heart rate and cardiac work. And finally, the raised cardiac work can also increase the hypertension, resulting in the raise in the blood pressure. So all these conditions are associated with increased cardiac workload, which is mainly affected by sympathetic activation. So propranol is a beta blocker, which can block this sympathetic activation on the heart so that it can reduce all these cardiovascular disorders. That's why propranolol can be used in the management of angina, irregular heartbeats, tachycardia. As a prophylactic, it can be used in the treatment of anxiety and it can also be used to reduce the hypertension. So for all these cardiovascular disorders, propranolol can be used. And this propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker. That means it can block the beta 1 receptors which are located on the heart resulting in the decreased cardiac work. That's why this drug is indicated for various cardiovascular disorders such as angina, tachycardia, hypertension and myocardial infarction. For all these conditions propranolol can be used. But this drug not only blocks the beta 1 receptors, it can also block beta 2 receptors. So it is not selective towards this beta 1 and beta 2, it can block both of these receptors. So by blocking beta 2 receptors, propranolol can affect so many types of organs. It can affect the functionality of lungs, liver, kidney and blood vessels. But because of non-selectivity, propranolol can be used in the various clinical conditions. It can be used in the treatment of migraine prophylaxis where severe headache may be associated with activation of sympathetic system. It can also be used in the management of pathological tremor which is again controlled by inactivation of sympathetic system. And it can be used during the surgical removal of pheochromocytoma, which is the adrenal tumor, where the released catecholamines can activate the beta receptors, which can be blocked by propranolol. And even this drug can be used in the treatment of hypertrophy, where ventricular walls are thickened. Again, in such conditions, propranolol can reduce the cardiac work, thereby increase the cardiac functionality. In this way, propranolol is one of the beta blocker, which is indicated in the various clinical conditions. Even propranol can also be used in the prophylaxis of hyperthyroidism. So today in this video, we are going to see how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of propranolol. Here we can identify the propranol chain. Let us give the numbering. This is 1, 2, 3. Now instead of ethanol, this drug is having the propranol chain. So we can write this as propane 2 ol Third position amine group is present, so 3 amino. To this amine group, isopropyl chain is attached, which can be written as propane 2 ir uh, Finally, at the first position, this entire ring is present. This ring is nothing but the naphthyl ring, which is attached by first position through the oxygen. So we can write this as 1 dash naphthalene 1 ile oxy. That is the complete name of propranolol. Now let us see how this drug acts. On the heart, beta 1 receptors are present. These are the G protein coupled receptors coupled with alpha, beta, gamma subunits. 
Now, catecholamines like norepinephrine can activate these beta-1 receptors. When norepinephrine binds to these beta-1 receptors, they are activated, resulting in the stimulation of adenylyl cyclase system. This adenylyl cyclase can convert the ATP molecules into one of the secondary messengers, cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP plays an important role and this cyclic AMP can activate one group of enzymes, protein kinase A. These are the phosphorylating enzymes which can target many of the cell components resulting in the contraction, resulting in the elevated levels of calcium and contraction of the cardiac muscle. For instance, they can target voltage-gated calcium channels located on the heart. Protein kinase A can interact with the alpha subunit of voltage-gated calcium channels resulting in its phosphorylation. So when it is going to be phosphorylated, the ion channel is going to be opened resulting in the entry of calcium. In this way, protein kinase A can increase the influx of calcium into the cardiac muscle. Similarly, it can also affect internal stores of the calcium within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, calcium can enter into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and this calcium can be released by activation of rhinodin receptors. So, when impulse reaches to the cardiac muscle, more amount of calcium can be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In this way, protein kinase A can increase the contractility of cardiac muscle. And the target is the troponin. Protein kinase A can interact with the troponin such that it can increase the phosphorylation resulting in the activation of troponin myosin complex which again results in the contraction of the cardiac muscle. In this way, norepinephrine can produce a cardiac contraction, which results in the increased heart rate, increased oxygen consumption, increased cardiac work and elevated levels of blood pressure. All these are because of activation of heart through the sympathetic activation. Now, propranol is a beta blocker. It can bind to beta 1 receptors as antagonist, thereby it can block the activity of beta 1 receptors. When these receptors are inactivated, the cardiac contraction is going to be inhibited, resulting in the relaxation of cardiac muscle and decrease in the cardiac work. In this way, propranolol can reduce the sympathetic stimulation, thereby it can be used in the treatment of cardiovascular disorders. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of propranolol is that because of non-selectivity, this drug can block the beta-2 receptors located on the lungs, so this drug can produce some bronchospasm. That's why propranolol should be carefully used. In the asthmatic patients, this drug is contraindicated because of bronchospasm. Similarly, this drug can block the beta-2 receptors located on the liver, resulting in the decreased hepatic glucose production, which may increase the hypoglycemia. This is particularly more important in the diabetic patients, where they are treated with anti-diabetic agents, which produce hypoglycemia. So, in such patients, if propranolol is given, it can further increase the hypoglycemia. So, in the diabetic patients, propranolol should be carefully used. What are the side effects? Propranolol can cross the blood-brain barrier. So, it can produce few of the central side effects resulting in fatigue, dizziness, some lightheadedness can be observed. It can also produce some insomnia, some visual disturbances, vivid dreams, some illogical dreams can be observed. And this drug can reduce the heart rate resulting in the bradycardia. It can also reduce the blood pressure resulting in hypotension. At high dose, it can also reduce the atrioventricular block, so it should be carefully used in the patients with any conduction blocks. And finally, this drug can also produce hypersensitive reactions resulting in the skin rashes and erythema can be observed with this drug. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet form as well as capsules and is also available as extended release capsules where the drug is slowly released from this capsule and it is also available as solution. The dose of propranolol depends on the type of clinical indication for hypertension and some cardiovascular disorders. It may be started at 80 mg initial dose, but in few of the severe disorders, the dose may be increased. So, the general dosage is, is variable from 80 to 30 mg per day, which can be given as divided doses. So, that's about this drug propranolol, which is a non selective beta blocker which blocks both beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptors. Because of non-selectivity, this drug can be used in the various cardiovascular conditions as well as a prophylactic in migraine, thyrotoxicosis, pathological tremor and even pheochromocytoma. In all these conditions, propranolol can be used. This drug may produce bronchospasm, so it should be carefully given and it can also increase the hypoglycemia. 
particularly in the diabetic patients. So that's about this drug propron law. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.